Hello. Hello. Okay. Ah. <laughs> hey. All right. You ready? We'll do that again. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Excellent. Fantastic. Um, wow. This is awesome. Thank you for all coming. Um, thanks to Joe and the team at Red Badger for organizing this. Um, very, very um, pleased to be here and talking. So that's awesome. So, um, Hello, let me tell you a story about myself, yeah? Um, I don't have a clicker thing, so I'm going to press buttons on my laptop. Well, I'm from Australia originally. That's where I was born. I was, play, bo I was born in a place called Adelaide. Uh, you it may have heard it's called Radelaide. Um, that was a bit of a branding thing. And I went to a place uh, in Adelaide called Adelaide University where I studied architecture. And uh, after doing that, I um, sold some apples. I worked in a campus apple store where I had access to the internet and I learned HTML. And at the time, I had a record label which I set up called Pop Gun. And I was pretty, and I built a website about it, and it was all very exciting. And uh, after a bit of time, I decided to leave Australia and come to London via America because I was doing music and I was playing in bands. And uh, yes, I was doing the music. That's me with hair, and uh, and then I had design background, which went into UI web design, and then I went into UX, and then I've gone into service design. So I run my own company, uh, Popgun. Ah, awesome! Look at this, the man. <laughs> Continue. Oh, all, right. Work, yeah. all right, here we go. What does it say? Shift, the one to the shift key. I don't even know which one's the shift key. There we go. Let's skip. <coughs> Done. Ah, oh, look at that. Awesome. I have a clicker thing. Thank you. Round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I have my own uh, design agency consultancy called Popgun from my record label. And um, yeah, I've worked with lots of small, big companies, startups, so forth, Telegraph. I'm currently with the Ministry of Justice designing services for them. So, is this going to work? No? Ah, don't worry. I'll just use my computer. So, <laughs> stories. That was my story. Um, stories are amazing. Um, they carry a lot of emotions, yeah? Um, they're memorable. I'm hoping... I've just given you a very short snippet of my story. I'm sure there's probably one thing or maybe two that you remember and you might be able to share it because you can remember stories. And because they're shareable, you can collaborate. They're, they're collaborative, yeah? Stories move around the world. They, you know, amazing. Um, and in my story, I referenced a few maps, places, and maps are pretty brilliant as well. And not only do maps help tell stories, but they also tell present states and future states and past states. But they can also embed a lot of information. Um, so there's another extra layer to maps. So, you know, some famous maps is one from Lord of the Rings. Um, some would say well, this is very much where we're at at the moment in the current climate in Mordor. Uh, there's... Um, Grayson Perry, I don't know if anyone's seen this. This is an amazing piece of art uh, by Grayson Perry. He did this map of days about himself and his emotions and, 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 and states of, of how he's feeling. And he worked with a cartographer and his characters. And it's just dense. It's amazing. Worth seeing if you can find it. Ah, brilliant. And hey, thank you. Uh, tube map, everyone's. Right? You know, if you want to get somewhere, this is a pretty amazing piece of design. It's classic. And then there's obviously... Inf well, let's just move on a little bit, shall we? Just move on. So, so you know, maps and stories, fantastic. Um, Jeff Patton, he's an agile guy, um, as in agile with a big A, and 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 developer came from a development background. He he's into building products. He wrote this book. It's awesome. And um, there were two big things that came out of that book for me. Was that is about facilitating conversations. You know, building user story maps or story maps is about facilitating these conversations 
to achieve a shared understanding. And as Claire is saying, that you know, it's this shared understanding that you want to build in a product team or a design team, not only just within those teams, but with stakeholders and you know, business and all the people that are involved with it. So um, I'm sure we've all been in this situation at the top here. We're, we're having a meeting. Uh, you know, I'm a designer. I'm a business uh, analyst. I'm someone who's created a whole bunch of user stories. I just give them to you, yeah, go on, go and build that, you know, so there's a big wadge of requirements, or here's, here's a nice wireframe deck for you to have a look at. Well, in my experience, no one bothers to read these things properly, or if they do, you get this situation up the top left-hand corner where everyone's got a different kind of take on it, um, and then they build the thing, and it's like, oh, hell, oh, God, um, and then after chatting, <laughs> hello, <laughs> you end up agreeing what that differences are, the differences are, and you, you create the shared understanding. So I think the bottom line is shared documentation doesn't mean shared understanding. Yeah, you need conversations. And, and actually one really big point to remember is this, this doesn't mean that it's a dysfunctional team. You can have really, really functional teams where they have a good rapport, and you're gonna still get misunderstandings if you're not sitting down talking whether that be face-to-face -face or remotely, you need to have conversations. So, words and pictures help build that shared understanding. So it's not just about talking, it's about using artifacts and pictures and stories and building prototypes, making things. So, user story mapping, it helps you achieve a whole bunch of things, yeah? So, one thing from uh, Agile, which I, I, you know, talking to other designers, is I find that because it breaks down things quite small, a lot of people don't get to see the big picture. They don't, they're so focused on these little chunks of work that they often forget what the bigger thing is they're building. So a, a story map can help you see the whole picture, the whole holistic sort of view of it. Um, it gives you a roadmap of your future. You know, it shows you where you're going. You can see directions. You can see all the things that you're looking to build or maybe not build, yeah? Um, it also allows you to pr prioritize things, you know, which is really super important when you're up against budgets or, you, you know, you, you're validating things. And it, it also allows you to highlight a lot of pain points and see opportunities for maybe further research or design opportunities. Um, one thing I haven't added on here is it also allows you to build a backlog for your development team. Now, um, Jeff Patton in his book, he's, a, he's an agile guy and, and he, from that development background, he calls it user stories because when you make them, you're supposed to make user stories which then allows you to make a backlog. Yeah. So, uh, this is one that I've worked on with the tax tribunals. So I'm at Ministry of Justice and I'm working on, on, on a project service for allowing people to, to go to a tribunal if they've got a problem with a tax case. Now, uh, we had two members here who were leaving uh, the team, and I had about a very, very short window of time. I just started, and I needed to basically absorb a hell of a lot of complexity <laughs> about tax uh, and the service and so forth. And so we built this, and, and it was awesome. Um, and this is kind of the structure. You'll see at the top, there's this backbone. There's this sort of main line of the story, the narrative, yeah? And then... Has this got one of those funky lasers? Yeah, it is. Ah, oh, awesome. Ah, oh. oh, right, excellent. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, so you got a backbone, that's your narrative. So this is this one up here, that's our big story. And we've got a whole bunch of tasks underneath. These are all the things that people do. And then we've got some buckets we've slipped it into as uh, activities. So let's make one. Woohoo! All right, so it'd be interactive, kind of, I lied. Um, the, the, what, what you need to do is we need to make a backbone. We need to get the big picture. We fill in all the tasks, and then you can explore it, and then you can start to slice it, yeah? So let's, we'll create one. So a morning ritual. The alarm goes off, and you get to work, all right? So I'm going to use my own example, which is, Turn the alarm off. I go to the loo, uh, brush my teeth, uh, I get dressed. All right. And then 
I check my phone, I go downstairs, I check my phone, because, um, yeah, I check my emails, uh, pack my bag, get, get my bike, I'm, I, I, I'm a southern, uh, I live south, uh, anyone else feel the pain of southern rail? Oh. So I'm back on my bicycle, which is great. Um, say goodbye to the family, start cycling, get to work. All right, that's my backbone. Woohoo! So, there's my, ooh, ooh, settle down. Uh, so here's my backbone. Yeah. So that's the kind of my journey, my story. And then I've filled out all the tasks. So I'm filling out all the big pictures. What are all the things under all these that I want to build? So, you know, I, well, I go to the loo, I wash my face, I brush my teeth. I, well, I, it's been cold. So I've added all my extra bits on and uh, check my phone. I'm a Clash Clan player, so I, I have to check my Clash Clan. Anyway, so you get the, you get the idea, all right? So then... I add all the top level activities at the top, you know, so getting clean, dressing, preparation, commute. I've made a story map, right? That is, that is as easy as it can be. So you can apply, sorry, what going? Where's coffee? It was breakfast, yeah, yeah it was breakfast. <laughs> all right, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Um, shall I just put it? That's the thing. That's why I keep. Oh, okay. That's why I keep. Oh, okay. No worries. Thank you. It's to be. All right. I shouldn't. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Cheers, mate. Thank you. All right. So there you go. Um, just to illustrate the point once again. Um, but today, because I'm uh, a bit of a sweaty guy, and when I cycle, um, I um, I decided to take the train. So I'm adding a different lens here now. One thing I did mention before I set this up. So if you're designing a service or a product or you're doing any sort of design for something, what do you usually have before? You'll have some research, you'll have a value proposition. What is the goal of the business? What are we doing? What is the thing we're making? Why are we making it? So you'll have a whole bunch of research you'll have, which you can um, have on the wall. So this is our purpose, this is our goal, this is what we're trying to achieve. Ideally, you should have some user research around who the people are you're building this thing for, internally or external people. And then also, um, if you don't, you should have some hypotheses about them. Uh, maybe you should have some proto-personas or pen portraits. Um, yeah. So you should have an idea who this is. So this is one persona. This is me. Oh, sorry. Let me go back. This is me cycling. That is one persona. Yeah, today my new persona is I don't want to come here sweaty, so I'm catching the train. So, oh, I use I do a little slice, and then I can map the same journey. So what I did was I moved all the cycling stuff down, and then I put all my other things. So you know, I'll have a shower because I shower at work. I'm lucky we got a shower at work, so I don't bother a shower in the morning. So I'll have a shower at work. My dressing is different. I put my work clothes on when I'm catching the train, but when I'm cycling, I'm doing all these different tasks. Yeah? Um, that's the same, that's the same. Oh, but when I pack my bag, I just take my computer and all. But when I'm cycling, I've got my bike gear and I've got my showering bits because I'm getting dressed at work. So you can see there's, you can start to slice this. There's this real power. So if you've got um, different users for your product or your service, you can start to slice it and look where the differences are and you can expand it that way and put and it doesn't matter if there's gaps you know obviously here i don't need my bike this day i'm catching the train but when i get here i'm using public transport so i need there's a bus or train i should have oyster card down here is it topped up so the, what are all the tasks that i need to do when i'm catching the train or or whatever is probably make sure i swear on twitter to southern or whoever so um uh yeah so um yeah. Um, so thinking, so that's that's the kind of metaphor. If you're thinking about the products and things you make, you've got your backbone, you've got all your tasks, you can start to slice it. So if you imagine you're making your product and your account manager comes in or, or someone says, right, well, sorry, the budget's been cut. Yeah, we've got to get something out in the next two weeks. You've got another sprint. You've got another two sprints to get this thing released, okay? So you can start to draw a line and go, okay, what are the most important things that we need to do? So you can start to shift, put lines and go, okay, well, this is a, a, a minimal viable product. This is our thing that we want to 
we need to make to get out the door. And this is our second release, and this is our third release. So you can start to slice things horizontally, yeah? Um, you can also start to slice things vertically as well. You, you can say, well, OK, from our research and that, we've realized a lot of the pain is in this bit here. Yeah, this is where all the trouble is, so let's focus on that. If we don't have much time or money, we should focus on that bit. Yeah? So again, it's really powerful. But the wonderful thing about it is, so there, there's some of the team again, is that it's collaborative. So you can do your jazz hands. You get people involved, people are writing post-its, you're having discussions, you're telling a story. It's memorable. You get stakeholders along. They remember it. So in this case, the tax tribunal, um, it, it's complex, a lot of nuances around what type of tax it is, when you can apply, when you can't apply. Um, looking to do some uh, sort of fees, so it's kind of like, what's happening there? Um, how do we involve it? So we got stakeholders involved. So the two people were leaving, had a very short amount of time with their knowledge, domain knowledge that they were living with. So within two days, I got a really good understanding of the whole journey. And it wasn't just what we were looking to build. It was the end-to-end -end journey, so a real service approach to the whole thing. What happens before they come to the tribunal? What happens after they come to the tribunal? And then you, we started to notice that there was a lot of pain before they came to us when they were dealing with HMRC. And I feel very pleased to say our team and that we've managed to make some changes there, uh, which is brilliant. But once we'd done this, we went, okay, well, let's get the business in and sense check this. So we did. We got them in and um, we got them to go, well, what's missing here from your point of view? This is what we understand happens at the business level. Is this right? And they're like, oh, yeah, no, this is right. Or no, this comes here and, and it's posted so you can move things around and it's all good. Um, and then we also started putting on different layers. So from a service map, uh, sorry, from a service design mapping or, an, you know, looking at a, a journey mapping and stuff like that, you can start to layer on different things like emotions and pain and, and, and opportunities. So you, there's lots of different things you can do. Now, the great thing was that I got that from a design perspective, but for the production team and for the development team, we could then generate each one of these as like a user story. So then we started writing user stories, which then we noticed which, where the epic bits of development were going to be. And then we could then put them into a backlog and then start to prioritize and size it and go, well, this is going to take us this long and this is where we need to spend our efforts. So awesome tool. Um, so backbone, create the big picture, explore it, and then go slicing away. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah. yeah can I ask, is there a, a number of limitations you can slice or can you slice, have your slice on uh, as many times as you want if it's, it's required by the part? Absolutely. The question was, if anyone didn't hear it, it's, I mean, are, are you limited by the, uh, how many slices you can yes. do? No. I mean, it's up to you. It depends how you want to slice it. I mean, you can slice it by release or by personas, by people. Um, I'm trying to think of some other, other ways you could slice it time of the day. I mean, it all depends on what it is you're designing, but there's no limitation whatsoever. No. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, sorry, this is a, actually another question about slicing. You had in your visual slicing it vertically, yeah. but that seemed to cut through the backbone. So if you removed a slice from the middle, does it, does it still work? Does it not, um, do you not miss bits? I'm gonna, I'll go back to that so we've got some context for it. So, so is that slide there where you... Yeah. So, so you couldn't deprioritize something from the middle of your backbone, surely, because then it wouldn't work end to end. So, you, sorry, you're saying you're deprioritizing. So, if you go like this, you're deprioritizing these things. I don't know. It was a question as to is ah. that could would you split if you were building your backlog, for example, mm -hmm. and then you get your budget constraint? You couldn't remove a slice that you'd made vertically, could you? You could, with all means, because I mean, you if you're building your shower, right? if you're 
if you're building, well, a good, okay, so using that metaphor, I sleep in, okay? okay? So I sleep in today, I'm catching the train, uh, so I'm running late, um, so what am I going to slice out? And um, uh, So we just accept that some you to so, be dirty at work. So, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I won't have a shower and I'll use more deodorant. Some would say <laughs> it's a risk, all right? You, got, you know, it's all about uh, identifying risk risks, isn't it? Um, and I, I like the fact that no one said I didn't, I washed my hands after oh, the loo as well. It got picked up today when I ran through this. Um, but yeah, so I think it all depends on the thing you're, you're, you're designing for and, and what you want to, and that's something, again, it's a conversation, isn't it? It's with your product owner, with um, the development team, the stakeholders, because they'll say, well, if we don't get this, this slice out, we're going to be late to market. So if we don't release this thing with that, we're, we're, we're fried, you know? So it's those sort of things which are outside of often your control. But when you've got this and you're having those conversations with those people in the room, and I mean, I've been, when I was at the Telegraph, it was the first time we used it, and we redesigned the CMS and, and the whole website, yeah? And we did a story map for the whole uh, CMS side of things. And, and when you start showing, because, you know, stakeholders, ah, oh, yeah, just build it. It, it. It's just, yeah, it's always just, just build it. Um, and then when you show them all the things, they go, oh, right, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a fair bit of effort in there. So then they start to realize how much development time is. You can do it, let's just give us more money or people or whatever. Thank you, that was uh, really good. Cool, thank you. Um, so going back to your, your previous example, how does it deal with optimization? Because for example, you're checking emails that could be taken from the backbone and repositioned somewhere else or? Yes, yeah, it, absolutely. So um, so when you say optimization, what would be the? It, it's, so if you go back to the slide where you've got, got everything on there. Yeah. I'm not trying to optimize your morning, morning routine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can see like one slice, your one vertical slice is check emails that could be potentially moved to somewhere else on the backbone? Absolutely. How, how uh, do you deal with that, that process of sort of, okay, let's take this from position six and move it, combine it with position 10? Yeah, you could do. I suppose if you're looking at features, I mean, if you're looking in sort of traditional um, software development and that, you might go, well, actually, we don't want this feature, or you've maybe you've done a piece of design or research where you go, actually, having this as a standalone thing doesn't work. We want to integrate it with something. So. Uh, when you've got this, you could actually again go, okay, let's do something on check emails. And you could story map that whole check emails thing where you go, what is the story for that and why are we doing that? So if you're looking to build a new feature like we did with tax tribunals, we mapped out the now. And then what we did was we mapped out the future, which was how do we get a payment tool in here or how do we add a document upload and how do we put all the things that we want to put in. Um, so you can look at those existing, I mean, it's up to you. you. You can make several of them or you can map them to the same one. There's no real rules to it. Does that kind of Yeah, no, that, that does. Thank you. Lovely. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, yeah, I think it's a fantastic way to get the context of the journey and the stuff we work on. I think I'm, I'm curious about these forking scenarios. You might take a train or a spike or something else. Yeah. Um, how do you do that without getting too much complexity? I feel that's not like um, very easy to grasp, like the differences between here. If you imagine you have like five different scenarios in here, so mm -hmm. how do you keep it visually aligned? What's your best trick? For yeah, that? Is there anything? Good, 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 uh -huh. good question. Um, I think it's through trial and error. I mean, the fact of, um, I mean, even just doing this, I was like, oh, what do I do? Do I just push everything down where yeah. the common things are? You could just, I could just recreate those story maps for each persona and then you could have different ones. Mm. But if there's commonalities, it's nice to sh show what's shared. Mm. So, I mean, um, you know, this one could be all users in a way mm. and, 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 you know, you could slice what's the minimum that all users need. Sure. And then you could add a new row, which is this is just when you're biking and this is just when you're catching train. Um, so, yeah, it, it all depends on how you want to use as a tool and how much wall space you have <laughs> as well. 
Um, and and just on, just on that, because um, I go to a lot, uh, you know, I've worked in a lot of places where the modern office is open plan, and please don't put any blue tack on the walls. Um, <laughs> I'm sure we've all been in those. So these things are really good, whiteboards, because you can always use them. But um, I was in one place where they got um, foam board, big, huge, big foam boards. And it was brilliant, and because they're lightweight, you can carry them around. Um, but they were seven foot long, and they didn't quite fit in the elevator. <laughs> and they didn't f work too well in the stairwell as well, so it was a bit like, I don't know if anyone's read Dirk Gently's uh, Holistic Detective Agency where there's a sofa gets stuck in a stairwell. It was a bit like that. You kind of like negotiate. But the, good, the thing is you can create walls and you can, you can put these on things. It's good. You need wall space. That's it. Thanks. All right. Cool. cool. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? That's good. Good questions. Thank you very much, Thanks Jason. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.